episode 89 of the we'll just agree to disagree podcast i am ryan lee i'm beyonce fox i like when i get to sit like right next to you like we'll i can see. do this okay, stuff. Okay. stop hitting me oh okay. <laughs> all right um Maybe yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> beyonce we've been wanting to talk about this for a little while but we actually have been wanting to see how everything was playing out mm-hmm. i'm talking about the buffalo bills player damar hamlin uh mm-hmm. beyonce for those who don't know let them know what happened well, uh, Monday Night Football, not this past week, but week prior, mm-hmm. they were playing the uh, Cincinnati Bengals, and uh, he took a hit mm-hmm. to the chest. And um, immediately after the hit, you know, he got up, we thinking, okay, it's just a regular hit in football. But then all of a sudden, he collapsed. Yeah. So it was cardiac arrest. Now, there have been, you know, different stories going around that he was resuscitated many times. His mom said just once, mm-hmm. but his uncle was telling the media that he had to be resuscitated a couple of times, actually on the field. And that's not something that usually happens on the field. Perhaps you're taken away in an ambulance or something like that. Right. And then you're resuscitated like at a hospital or something. But this happened on the field yeah. during one of the biggest platforms in the NFL, Monday Night Football. And of course, you know, it just sent the entire nation into shock Literally. seeing that this man actually died yeah. on the football field and had to be resuscitated. Now, doctors are saying that he suffered cardiac arrest and it is called um, commodio cordis. And that, and I'm not a medical doctor. I may mm-hmm. be messing that up, but it sounds like a Latin word to me. But anyway, it's a phenomenon that occurs when someone takes a blunt hit to the chest and yeah. that causes cardiac arrest. Yeah. So very, very scary indeed, whether yeah. you're a football player or not. Yeah, and you guys see a special guest here, my man Kyle Prater. And we wanted to, we have our thoughts on everything that went down, but me and Beyonce wanted to bring somebody on who plays the sport of football, has been in the league, and can really discuss this. And I know Kyle, uh, first let me let them know that you played at Brazo West out here right uh, in our neighborhood. You went to USC and Northwestern and played. Wow. And then you got drafted in 2015 where you played for the New Orleans Saints. Um, you went on IG Live right after it happened. And like you said, everybody was in shock. Of mm-hmm. what we just watched. I think everybody just started praying. And after that, I was on Instagram and I saw your live and you really explained that you as a player, it was like you're not used to seeing that from your players. Right. Speak on what uh go back to that night and speak on what you saw. Um, you know, I think you know, I went live for one reason. You know, it's crazy when I saw it. I saw it live happen. I was sitting exactly where I'm sitting right now. Mm-hmm. And I was actually like taking a nap. I was working, had a long day had Monday Night Football up on the screen. And it's just for some reason, I think God woke me up out of my nap for me to see that, you know, and it happened. I woke up right when that moment happened. And like, we're so accustomed as players and even fans and just the the world uh, to seeing injuries, but we're not accustomed to seeing someone getting resuscitated and CPR on the field. And the players, you can see the their, their faces like it was it's not normal. No. And what I went live because, you know, I think it had to be talked about in terms of the stuff that we go through as athletes. Um, we should normalize certain things like this. And I wanted this situation to not be normalized because it's not normal to get CPR in a football game. You know, already we're already like deemed as gladiators and superheroes and things of that nature. But it's like I. I hate that it happened, but I also, there's another side for me that like, I want to pull the silver lining. And like, I'm glad we got a chance to see what we go through as players. You know, you saw a grown man crying, you know, you never seen anything like this. And so it's like, I wanted the world to, to feel what everybody, every player has felt for over the past couple of decades or just since football has even been in the, around. So, um, I just think, man, we need to, you know, really be conscious of what's going on in the sport. You know, I had five surgeries when I played. You know, I had a concussion was my last injury with the Saints. And I didn't get a chance to play as long as I wanted to. But throughout my career, um, you're part of that brotherhood. You know what I'm saying? You see your brother go down. It's it's a we all a family. It's a fraternity. And, you know, I felt that pain that everybody else uh, felt. I just wanted to voice it. You know, for me being a storyteller and a director and a you know, now I transition out of my, my uh, first act and now to my second act of life. I wanted people to to hear me regurgitate it in a way that they can digest it. 
And, um, you know, I was just speaking on my emotion. You know, I wear my emotions on my sleeves, but this was one emotion that I wanted to express to the world. And I think, you know, right now we have to be conscious of the the players and our emotions. I think mental health is huge. You know, now you got to think about the trauma that now we all have now. Mm -hmm. And now, now there needs to be some form of therapy that needs to go into uh, what we all witnessed. So, um, yeah, man, it, it, it's tough. It was tough watching. But I think now we're, we all got a chance to really, now we can all speak. You can't hide now. We can't, NFL can't run from like how violent of a sport it is. I love it. But, you know, I I went out on that field knowing that there can be a chance that something could happen that could end my career. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank God he's alive and um, he's he's speaking and he's able to, to move and he's able to be uh, able. But, you know, right now it's not about football. It's not about, you know, wins. It's not about loss. It's about a, a man's life. And um, I think we all got a chance to witness that. And um, I'm glad we're able to have a discussion about it. Honestly, Kyle, do you think that DeMar should get back on the football field? You know what? That, that's the question, you know, for him and the doctors and his team and his camp. You know, I think me personally, I think he has to do his best for him. But another discussion is like, I don't think he's vested. I don't think he was vested. You know, you got to think it's three years, three to four years, you got to be in the league to get vested. And so I think he was only two years. Mm -hmm. And so now you look at if he doesn't get a chance to play, is the NFL going to support? So that brings another discussion as to like our contract should be guaranteed. Because look at the risks mm -hmm. that we put, look at the risks. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the most violent thing you could ever see. Mm -hmm. and, and just to touch on too, I want to talk about T. Higgins. The person who made contact with him, it's not his fault. It's a football play. Yeah. You know, and, and to, to see fans and people throwing the man under the bus and slandering yeah. his name, demonizing him for a play that's a football play. Yeah. Shame um, on them. That was whack. No, shame on them. But at the same time, man, like it, that's part of the game. No one plays the game to get hurt. You know, we can go into discussion on and on. D Rose didn't play the game to tear his ACL, but they slandered his name. It's the same discussion. So uh, we need to start giving, looking at these players as humans. You know what I'm saying? And, and and that's what I think this opened the discussion up for. I think it's interesting, and you kind of touched on it, is that we we as fans get accustomed to watching this game, right? Mm -hmm. And we see you guys go out there, and it's a big thing. But we don't realize, like you said, the mental part of it that goes into it. And that we think you, you're you just going through the emotions, but you see somebody have to have CPR on the field or maybe not that extreme but you see yeah. people being carried out on the stretchers mm -hmm. stretchers and concussions all these things talk about the mental aspect that a fan may not understand that a football player goes through on a daily basis oh man you know what i was talking about this and that's why i'm so adamant about like what i do today um in my second act of life is that the mental health component is huge because when you get hurt um Aside from the physical, being physically hurt, you become mentally hurt. You got to go through recovery. You have to build the confidence back. Um, you're not playing. So imagine a lo the locker room dynamic. You know, as a player and your your teammates, you don't want to be hurt, but there's a, 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 a culture shift between you and your team that, like, they're looking at you like you're not playing, so you're not an asset anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like you're just a body. And then the coaches even look at you in that manner, you know, because I've dealt with this so many times, you know, losing confidence, rebuilding confidence, losing confidence, rebuilding confidence. That does a toll on your mental. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be therapy in between that or like, thank God for the, the support system I had. And, you know, and I believe in the higher power, but uh, to build that confidence back, to get back to a place where you plan at a high level isn't the easiest. So fans and people that don't know the sport, they look at us again, like from a performance performance standpoint. Yeah. Even fantasy football, people get mad at certain players that didn't give them a amount of points, and you can see that that fan on the street that you don't know. And then they like, man, you you didn't get you didn't get this amount of catches this week. You didn't get this many yards. And it's like, well, what if I had something going on at home with my wife? Or what if I had yeah. something going on internally that you didn't know about that's affecting my performance on the field? You'd see me coming up at your job talking about like, man, oh, you didn't get. That amount of, uh, you know, we're not coming up at your job telling you what to do. Yeah. It's just football players, we get put on this such this pedestal. It's just like, man, we got to be this great, grandiose of a person and player. So it's so much that we got to navigate through, man, emotionally, me mentally, physically, um, that I think um, this opened up the discussion for. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you say that the NFL has made some strides, though, in recent years um, with support groups for mental health issues, also um, pulling back the covers, if you will, on some of those injuries like CTE, uh, the head injury, things like that? Would you say they're making some progress? I would, but it, it's it's like reactive, though, reactive yep. progress. Yep, yep. It's like we make progress after it had already been done. Yeah, you know, like what, why isn't why one wasn't this done before? Like why aren't we being proactive? Mm-hmm. And so we know we live in a capitalistic world. I get it, uh, but you know, again, it's like they have made strides, but they've been like reactive strides. Mm-hmm. And so I'd rather take any stride than no stride at all. But again, like I think we've never seen what we saw last week ever. So this, this this that's why I went live, you know, because I was just so fed up. Um, with one, like you said, we become it's normalized to see the ambulance come on the field and you see that guy getting carted off and do the thumbs up to let thumbs you know. Up. Okay. The game's back. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. You know, it's it's been normalized to see somebody go into the tent on the sideline and then he come back on the field and he's playing. It's been normalized to see somebody go into the tunnel and go back up to the locker room. You know, I know what happens when he goes up to the locker room. You know, I've got I used to get I literally cannot make this I used to get tort all shots before every game. Wow. like just to play and this is to perform yeah. you know so you doing you're trying to make a 53 man roster you're trying to please coaches and gms and owners you know not everybody's a first rounder not everybody has that you know position locked in so every week somebody on that team is like yo i gotta go hard you know it's war out there you know so to see all these injuries happen it's so heightened and it's becoming more heightened now the game's getting faster athletes are getting smarter the training is getting turned up. Uh, technology is getting better. So the performance is getting like better. So when you talk about like when he got that cardiac arrest off, off impact, the game is so fast, mm-hmm. you know? So it, the impact is harder. So it's so much that's changing in this game. I think that again, if we want to protect the players, we really have to figure out a way. Um, if it's from an equipment standpoint, or if it's from like just a, a collective bargaining standpoint from like these contracts, we got to figure it out, you know, because I was invested, you know, and that's just the truth of the matter. You know, I had to, you know, go out there and grind for mine, you know, and really get it out the mud. So, and so today what I'm doing is like having these discussions, teaching these kids how to build their brand and build their self after the game before they get to that only 3% make it. So um, getting these kids more conscious, not shooting dreams down, but also getting them prepared for like, look at what happened to DeMar Hamlin. You know, um, thank God he's here. But let's start preparing you to be um, to use who you are as a play a person outside of the game. You know, good point. Good point. I was kind of going to ask you, but I think you covered it there too. Uh, what is next for the NFL? Because I know a lot of people have said there are going to be maybe more injuries and more players are going to come out and speak about these type of things that have been, you know, been happening, but now are coming to the forefront. So what's next? How does the NFL truly handle this, or what do they need to do? to handle this so they're not reactive like they were before mm-hmm. um man th- th- that's a good question i think we we've, we've never seen what we saw last saw last week um i hope you know i don't know if it was some underlying with damar but you know imp- it's going to be impacts in the game it's going to be contact it's a contact sport i yep. uh, can't run from that but i think from a, a mental health standpoint the trauma that we've all experienced the past couple of weeks there had to be like support groups or something that we all need to have to talk about what we all witness. But going forward, I think, you know, I just think the NFL should be a little, they, these contracts, it has to be something for us after we're done or even when we're playing with things like this happen, you know, cause like you asked is would I come back and play if I'm able to be able to be healthy and I'm clear, I don't know, you know, that's up between his, him and the team, but on paper, he ain't vested. So, and they mind it's like he's not going to get, you know, what he's due if he don't come back out there and perform. So maybe in his head, he's like, man, I, I, I didn't play my contract. though. I didn't get to my second contract. So I got to come back. And hopefully he has a mind. And shout out to his uh, the people that donate to his uh, foundation because yeah. he went from four grand to like yeah. eight million. Yeah, it went crazy. Yeah, that's it went crazy. Yeah. So that, was, that was beautiful to see. Um, but yeah, man, I, I really can't answer that, man. I, I'm just going to be watching the NFL. Absolutely. Like a hawk. 
What's the general consensus, though? I know you still keep in touch with some of the saints and, you know, some of your homeboys you went to college with or whatever. What What's the general consensus among some of your colleagues, some of your boys about the situation? The general consensus is, um, you know, everything that I said on live, you know, a lot of my friends and, you know, former players and teammates reached back to me after seeing that because um, it's true. Even since I've been retired, I would have guys that, was playing and I still always, you know, ping a couple of my homies, you know, just to check on them. Um, a, a couple of them, when they when you in it, you're in it. It's like you locked in, it's so much. And then when they get retired, they would hit me and be like, yo, bro, how did you deal with the transition? Like how, like how was that? Yeah. Um, I think that's for me is the biggest thing is the transition. And from the mental health standpoint, and cause I feel like athletes we're behind in life once it's done, Cause you gotta imagine your whole entire life has been um, pegged around that sport. And then once it's done, um, it's done. It's what have you done for me lately? And if you haven't uh, set yourself up for success after the field or gotten a degree or uh, used your resources, then you just out here floating around. Mm -hmm. And you know, everything again, like I said, what I do is, is gonna help these athletes, you know, past, present and future. And so that that's a big concern for me. Yeah. You spoke about transition, and I want to get into this before we get up out of here. Uh, you have transitioned into now being a filmmaker, a director. That's how I met you, talking about some of the projects that you worked on. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about how you got started in that, and then also tell us about some upcoming projects that you're working on for 2023. Uh, yeah, so I got started back in 2016. Uh, I did a documentary in my last year with the Saints was 2016, and I did a documentary called Shifting Gears. And Shifting Gears is basically what you hear it shifting into the next phase of my life. And it was about, you know, one foot in, you know, still meeting with teams and being flown out to certain teams to try to, you know, get signed. And then also I was starting my own business, shooting photography, film, and just having some outside of the game. And what I noticed uh, uh, within that, that's when I found my calling, you know, you know, that's when I knew that like, this is what God intended for me to do. You know, I want to give back to the next generation. Um, so within that, but, uh, you know what what I'm doing today, you know, I got my um, non for profit we're starting in Q1 this year. I'm excited about it's called Act Two Foundation, uh, which I touched on earlier, uh, which is going to help uh, the next generation of athletes, you know, with uh, rebranding themselves and figuring out the transition before they get into the transition. You know, guys, you know, now they got name, image and likeness. Athletes can get paid in high school now. Yeah. You know, yeah. In, in college. So yeah. who's going to be that filter? And that's why we starting the foundation to. Uh, meet them in the middle and also just prepare them for life after and help them learn how to be creative entrepreneurs and uh, you know brand themselves in a way that they never had before so and then i'm also document doing a documentary with uh lene harper she's from chicago uh we working on some can't get too much alpha on that but i'm really excited about that what you can tell us tell us <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i'm gonna give you a little bit i'm gonna give you a little, little, little soft, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be, it's gonna be a documentary it's gonna be coming out in June and June um this year. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. And also, man, I'm multifaceted, so I got a couple of things. I got music I'm gonna be releasing. I'm a producer as right. well. So, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about it all, man. I'm excited about it. So it's gonna be cool. Wow, that's... some music. Okay. Is it hip hop or what is it? It's I mean it's a it's a multitude of things. It's it's a a roller coaster of of genres. I would say. Okay. Yeah, because. You know, me being who I am, I'm a roller coaster of a of a person. So it's like I can take you here, <laughs> high low, you know, it's you know, <laughs> you know, the Gemini in me comes out, then the cancer's like, oh, you know, this this, this oh, one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um no, nah, I'm, I'm excited about this year, man. Again, like I said, I told Ryan I met him um and Leon and, and Kendra and Kyle have been real good friends with the, the family for a long time. Uh, whenever I'm I'm up to something, I always ping them like, yo, I'm up to something. And, and it's always impactful. You know, I don't like to talk about what I'm doing. I like to just show what I'm doing. But if I'm talking about what I'm doing, we actually putting, we executing behind it. So um, everything I do is like servitude in a sense. Mm -hmm. So for the culture, because these kids look at me really as uh, somebody that of inspiration. You know, when I walk in the room, they see athlete. Then I talk, they like, oh, shoot, you, you're the owner and founder of your own company. You do film. So it, it breaks that barrier. And then now we had that discussion. And so, um, so yeah, everything I'm doing this year, man, I'm really excited about. 
No, that's yeah. dope. Before we get, I just want to say two things. Number one, congrats to you, Kyle, on everything. Uh, I think Kyle is the definition of use your platform. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you started in football and I think God gave you that platform. And I think he, like you said, transitioned you into your purpose and what you're called to mm -hmm. do. And I think so many kids need to see more athletes like you that can talk about, hey, you may get there, but if you don't, right. this right. is what you need to look into. Or if you get there and you got to transition, Maybe you should do this. So mm -hmm. I give big kudos to you. And then also, I think for Beyonce, myself, and from Kyle, uh, to DeMar Hamlin, to his family, to his friends, to his teammates, we are praying for everybody still. We're praying for a complete recovery and his healing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the whole world was honestly shocked. So I think we're all just praying for him still. Yeah. And I hope you get first rights to the movie so you can, you know, get DeMar. Okay. You whole movie okay. on this whole piece because seriously, God has blessed you, man. Yeah. You're using your football talent and you transition that into creative arts talent. So yep. it's all in divine order. And I'm very, very happy for you. Very proud of you too. Yeah, Keep thank doing you. what you're doing to instill in our youth that there's more to just being on a football field or a basketball Absolutely. court or whatever. So thank you for that. Absolutely. Uh, thank uh, you. Thank you. Where can people follow you at to check out some of the work you're doing? All right, so got a couple platforms. I think two I can get you right now. It's uh, Twitter. You can follow me at K2P21. Uh, Instagram is the same, K2P21. So it's real simple, K2P21. Dope. Uh, awesome. Guys, you can follow us always at We'll Just Agree to Disagree or uh, Ryan Mediately. I almost forgot my own Instagram. <laughs> Beyonce, where can they follow you? Beyonce at? Fox everywhere. All right, guys. Episode 89 will be back next week. Uh, thank you again, Kyle, for stopping by. Peace. Thank you. Peace.